And I think over time, mindset plus just the commitment to excellence in your niche. And I don't have a single episode that is really about that, but I think it's such a, been such a team across all episodes of like, don't try to do everything. Just really stay focused on one thing, really create systems and really just work on your mindset on a daily, daily basis. What's up, everybody? My name's Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? My brother, so good to see you. I am super excited for this milestone. Super excited for just overall life. Life is good. You know, there's a lot of things going on. And I find myself having to really like go back to being grateful for what the journey has been. You know, and, 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 and looking back at the times that we were hoping and wishing for this level of anything, right? This level of work, this level of, of things, this level of clients and so on and so forth. Because again, I, a very good friend of ours, Chris Crawford, always, always taught me this. It's just like a lot of the times we say like, I'm feeling overwhelmed and the realization that overwhelm is a choice, right? So in, in that moment, right, like you can choose to feel overwhelmed or you can choose to feel grateful. So that's really much the space I'm in right now. Still looking for a new, a new team member, still onboarding properties, changing systems, which we'll talk about later on. So sometimes we like Tasha and I look at each other. We're just like, <laughs> there is a lot of stuff going on. Right. But so that's, that's when you're just grateful that, you know, we got the freedom that we have and the choices that we get to do. And, and really like looking back, you know what I mean? Like a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, we were in a completely different situation, hoping that we would be where we are now. So just kind of in that space right now, a lot, but life is good. Well, I'm man. so excited to see you soon. Like I, I, <laughs> Nashville is going to be amazing. Yeah, man, we're, we're super pumped that we were talking offline, just all the last minute logistical, like the amount of work that goes into putting on an event like this. Like I thought it was going to be a lot, but it's a lot, <laughs> a lot to do. But uh, I can't wait for it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a blast. The attendees are going to get a ton of value and uh, have a lot of fun. Like we, we consciously created this event to give education, but also to have, let people have fun, right? And build those relationships and just have a good time. So yeah, I'm pumped. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Love it. Yeah, man. So we're at, we just past 100 episodes. And uh, it's crazy. I was looking at our, our analytics, right? Like we talk about knowing your numbers, right? So I was looking at our analytics and it was like, when we started almost two years ago now, it was like, it was like, like nothing. And then we started to get a little blip and now, you know, we're up around 30,000 downloads a month. So kudos to all these listeners, all you guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Hopefully you yeah, guys are getting so a ton of value out of this. And um, so what we want to do for this episode was kind of reflect back over the last hundred episodes even really the last 30 or so episodes over the last six months or so, and just talk about some of the stuff that we've learned and some of the stuff that we've implemented in our business. Cause we practice what we preach, right? It's not like it's, it's set it and forget it. Like we're constantly looking for ways to take the business to the next level. And I'll, I put a list together of like six or seven things that I've, I've made changes to in my business just based on the episodes that we've had. So I don't know how you want to do it, buddy. You want to kick it off? Or you want me to kick it off? No, I mean, I, I would love for you to kick it off because as always, you're more organized than I am. And I'll just kind of kind of flow from there. But to me, honestly, like looking back at the last hundred episodes, it's been so amazing to see both of our businesses really change in a very drastic way. You know, because I mean, when we first when we first started, you know, what I mean, like I was still so far away from some of my goals and just looking back now and like really realizing just how having this this show and just the quality of the guests that we have had on just that just the proximity to people that are good at what they do how that has made my business and your business so much better and so it's just like 
such a reminder of like your group and your network and just being open and being being kind of coachable. And I and I'm noticing that now that we're interviewing new people, right? It's such a like important thing that I realize it's it's almost like a a, a core. And in fact, it is one of our core values, right? Like your ability to learn and grow. And I think this show has been such a blessing for me. 100%, man. 100%. So kind of diving right in here, you know, the this is in no particular order, but yeah. I was just reflecting back on some of the changes that we made. So, you know, Bill Faith, who we've had on the show twice now, who's co-hosting the event in Nashville, he talked about one of the ways that he got his listings to stand out was putting in like a full-blown coffee bar in his properties, not just like a Keurig or like a regular coffee pot, but like going soup to nuts with everything. So like in our last property that we launched, like, yes, I have the Keurig with some K cups. Then I have a French press. Then I have a full on espresso machine. And then I have like fresh whole beans and a coffee grinder there. So we've got like regular decaf and espresso plus a whole bunch of K cups. And uh, people are just like blown away. They're like, dude, this is amazing. Like if you're a coffee geek like me, like I'm like, damn, this is sick. Like I can have whatever I want in the morning. Like this is amazing. So yeah. Um, super good feedback on that. And not a lot of people are doing it. So yeah, you know, for a but couple everybody bucks, that is doing it as I've heard great feedback from, and it's such, especially I think if you are going into the more oh, competitive market and to the more high end market, that's such an easy way for you to put some money that makes a big difference. Because we were talking off air about a friend of ours that is just in the process of buying property now. And it's really that understanding and training as an investor as to, okay, we don't have infinite money. In it, and even if we did have infinite money, we, sh we still shouldn't spend it recklessly. So what, what are, what's the money that we can spend to make the most difference? And the coffee maker, like the whole coffee bar concept is such an easy, low hanging fruit that you, you literally get probably like a five, 10 X return on your money within the first six months. Yeah. Easily. You know? Easily. The second one we had Brindy from Loma homes on right around the time when we were getting the Florida house going yeah. and um, got some really good feedback from her on different things. So, you know, doing themed rooms, especially near Disney where we are down in Florida mm -hmm. and you know, we went big, like we invested the money, we made the rooms incredible. And, um, you know, we're shattering my projections on that property already. And we're two months in. So That's awesome. that was absolutely money well spent. Rod Khalif's episode was so good around mindset. He and I have been big into personal development for years. Mm -hmm. And um, the software that you use is important, but I promise you the difference maker is not whether you're using price labs or wheelhouse, it's your mindset yeah. and where you're at mentally in this mm -hmm. business. That's what's going to be the difference maker. So Rod's episode was so good around that mindset of just like, no matter what comes your way, like, how are you going to react to it? And like, where's your focus at? So that was episode 90. Yeah. Um, and I, and on that, I love just, I think we have had some great, great guests over time that have just shown just how good, how a good mindset makes all the difference. Right. And, and so I think a big thread for us and something that I know is important to you in your coaching is really asking that that why question and really asking like what's the intention what is the goal and i think that has been so evident over the last 100 episodes of the people that really did make something is just how laser focused they were on their uh why and their connection and the angle and so like i think you can literally find it in every single one of our especially the hosts right the hosts that made it big, they were all super well connected to their why. But then also in understanding your why, even in all the softwares and vendors that we had, the ones that succeeded the most, which was the greatest reminder for me and part of the reason why our business has kind of shifted a lot in the last like six to 12 months, it's really just the one thing, right? All of our software people that are experiencing great success didn't try to become the software of all. They just were like, what is our unique value proposition? What are we really good at? Let's just own that aspect. And I think over time, mindset plus just the commitment to excellence in your niche. And I don't have a single episode that is really about that, but I think it's such a, been such a team across all episodes of like, don't try to do everything. Just really stay focused on one thing, really create systems and really just 
work on your mindset on a daily, daily basis, you know, because if not, you don't get out of where you've been for so long without it. And there's no other way of saying that. Yeah. hundred percent. Annie Sloan's episode was great. She also, she actually sponsored the, uh, the event in Nashville. So shout out to Annie from the host company. Her episode was really good. Just getting me to think of different ways to maximize revenue through different upsells. So like simple example is just like charging for pool heat, right? At our latest property, we charge 60 bucks a day for pool heat and nobody box at it, right? So that's an extra 60 bucks a day that basically doesn't change anything other than my team going in and turning the pool heat on and turning it off. Um, so that's yeah. super easy upsell just from that. There was an episode where we talked about like from the guest perspective with Zach, uh, mm. yeah. And yeah, he was great. I, I, I wish we had more people reach out to us that are like Zach from more guests, like almost like professional Airbnb guests. So if you're listening to this and you are one, or you have, or know somebody that is one reach out because I think that episode was so valuable and it was such an enjoyable conversation to understand what makes something work. And again, going back to what we were saying about spending money wisely, I think that episode, especially if you're on a budget, it really helps you understand what does a guest really need? Cause there are some needs and there are some wants, right? If you're on a budget, you need to focus on the needs before the wants, right? Cause that's, if somebody gets all their need and then you can just deliver on one of their wants, you, you give them a great experience versus not covering anything that they actually need. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, um, just like a couple tangible examples from that. So like at one of our hotels, we switched from doing the individual toiletry kits to like mounting them with like nice displays in the showers. And originally a team got like nice clear bottles and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so we ordered labels for each of them that covers it up. So you can't see if it's like totally full or totally empty or whatever. So like, it just looks cleaner that way instead of just having those like clear bottles that just, I don't know, they kind of look gross over time. So like we had yeah. custom labels made and it looks really nice. And, um, at the latest property, I mean, that thing sleeps 30 people. So we bought like two full sets of pots and pans, like an insane amount of dishes and plasticware and all these different things. So like, they're not going to run out and they're going to be able to cook as much as they want for that many people. Just those little details that like people get annoyed with, they might not necessarily leave you a bad review, but if you have those things, it's, it's going to make itself easier for them to leave like an amazing review of like, man, they thought of everything for mm -hmm. this place. Yeah. Um, Another thing that I would kind of, and again, like the beauty for, for me with what we do with the show and, and the people that listen is that we're all in this business together and, and my learning is your learning. And, and so we've implemented actually, so a lot of the times we have vendors on the show, but like you guys need to know that like Mike and I don't have just random vendors. It's people that we have either use with consider using or are actively using right and so one of those people that came on the show this year breezeway we're actually in the process of implementing their system and again like knowing the quality of service you want to provide and being super clear with your why what your core values are ha, are allows you to go into the marketplace and find the systems because all systems work but they don't work for everybody. And there are so many different systems out there. So with what we understood about who we want to be as a company, we then looked at the, the systems out there and we're like, Breezeway is the one for us, right? So I think another big thing that like I've learned over the past 100 episodes is just, and you're a great, great teacher when it comes to that, the obsession about constantly tweaking the machine and constantly being like, does this work better? Does that work better? And to not be happy with the, well, this is how we've always done it, right? Because that is great, but doesn't mean anything. That this is how we've always done it. It's not a justification. It shouldn't be an answer for why you do certain things with your business. Yeah. Especially in an industry like this, that's growing so fast with so many more properties that are coming online. If you don't continue to innovate, you're going to get left in the dust. That's just the nature of the beast. I've got a couple more, but I'm curious to hear from you, man. So I know that you're doing Rank Breeze. Have you made any other tweaks or anything else that really popped out from you? I mean, implementing Rank Breeze, I mean, uh, excuse me, Breezeway 
is going to be a big one just from an operation yeah. standpoint. Yeah. I mean, like, and, and you know that like I've been a hundred percent kind of transparent with my journey, but like when I first started hosting the podcast, I didn't have leverage the way that I do now. Right. So to me, everything like I've literally implemented, like if I go to the beginning of when you and I started doing the show, I've implemented almost everything that we talk about in the sense of like systems and softwares and everything else in a way that like, that's not when I took over our business, I just kept doing the same thing. So I ran the business for the longest time on like just an Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. right? No availability online, no booking online or anything. Right. So really becoming available online and really like learning how to maximize pricing and really learning how to like take myself out of the pricing conversation also has been so valuable. And, and I think it gets lost, but it's just like, it's applicable to no matter the number of units. Like, I think a lot of people listen to this and you're like, have one or two units and just like, it doesn't matter. Like it's still, it's still applicable. It still makes a difference. You know what I mean? And like, that's been honestly, the biggest thing for me is just being over time, just going through the business and really having, having the actual courage to go in and being like, this doesn't work. How can we make it work better? May that be a person, may that be a, a software, you know what I mean? Like I've, now I use all of them, right? Like the Price Labs, never had that before. PMS system, never had that before. Smart BNB or like Hospitable now, never had that before, right? So like if we look at the last 100 episodes, so over 24 months almost, right? Everything is different. I've literally <laughs> implemented everything with Breezeway being the latest one, but in just the overall commitment that we have had to just continuously investing into into our business yeah yeah that's the name of the game right yeah. and i feel like i feel like i've got it pretty dialed in but there's always room for improvement like always you know from everything and we we've talked about it a lot on the podcast but listen to your guests right like you're gonna have some guests that just complain and whatever they're looking for a refund but like if you start to see a trend about something whether it's your check-in process and people can't get in or like the amenities that you're offering, or this doesn't look like the place that I booked, right? Like this feels misleading. Like listen to that feedback and make those adjustments, like tweak it, like adjust it because otherwise you're just going to keep getting those negative reviews and you're kind of missing the point. So I get it. Like you're going to get some reviews that are just like, all right, like this person's being obnoxious, but for the most part, you still want to listen to it and you still want to ask yourself, like, is this really a problem? And is this a recurring yeah. problem? And how can I adjust it? Yeah. The one thing and I don't want people to think is like, you have to just change stuff just to change it. Like, that's not what I'm getting at. Like you only want to tweak and adjust or changing, like going to a, a breezeway. That's a big step. So that's a commitment. Like you don't want to just do that on a whim. Like you want to think that stuff through, like what's missing in my business and how is this going to streamline it to make it better? Yeah. The improvements definitely need to be to make it better. And that's kind of where I was going, where I was hinting at earlier when I was talking about just understanding your business, because again, like, your business can just be your portfolio of vacation homes for you and your family, right? But understanding, okay, like what is the best way for us to run this business? Like what is the best way for us to to do this in a way that is just like, it's not a time suck. And then I think honestly, to me has been, and, and I've been pretty vocal about this, but it's it's the responsibility to your guests. And so what I tell people all the time they're getting started, especially when it comes from the real estate landlord side of things. It's one where our, our friend Mark Simpson always talks about, right? The moment you let somebody sleep in one of your beds, you're in hospitality. And this is our world now, right? So it's a different, it's a different ball game. But if you honestly care about your guests, you will make it in this business. What care looks like, I can't tell you. Mike can tell you, but you know what it is, right? Like, you know, the moment that you're like, can really like put yourself in a guest situation. Again, some people are going to be unreasonable, but those people, those reviews, when you read them also as a traveler, right? Like sometimes you go on a listing and it has great reviews. And then the last one is just like horrible, but then people look at it and they're like, this person is just a sad person, right? Because anyways, people can read through it, but again, don't hide your head in the sand. This is not a business where you can wait for indicators you need to find a way to create indicators along the way. 
Because again, if your goal is to create a five-star experience, you cannot be just reactive. Like there has to be an element of being proactive, which is, I think, another great thing that we learn from a lot of our guests, right? Is that proactive aspect of like, how do you handle relationship with guests? How do you handle issues? How do you handle anything that happens really, right? Because again, like people just want you to make them feel like you care and you value their money and their in investment, right? So people are not expecting a flawless experience, but they're expecting that when they call you, you will care. And I think that, again, like it's not, it's not rocket science, but I think honestly, looking back at everybody that we have had that is a great host, that's part of who they are as people, right? There is no money hungry, successful hosts. I, I haven't met any. You're not going to last that way. Like you might make some, some quick money, but it's not going to last. So yeah. like you just want to play the long game, right? Like if your property needs some work, do the work. If it needs repairs, do the repairs. Mm -hmm. If you're having issues with your lock for whatever reason, get a new lock, right? Like just, you got to be willing to do that stuff. And the, yes, you're going to make a bunch of money. Like there's no question. Mm -hmm. You're going to make even more money if you do all these things and take care, good care of your guests because they're going to tell everybody about you. And then over time, your rates just start to go up and up, right? So I don't know if I have anything else. I mean, there's there's been so many awesome episodes and I could talk for hours about it, but I want to try and boil it down to like some actionable stuff that I've actually done as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, I think I went through five or six of them that yeah. just in the last quarter we've implemented. Yeah. So, and I think another one that, that as we're like wrapping up really comes to mind, it's, it's, and I mean, we've had him on the show multiple times. I think he's the one that has the most shows, but it's the whole concept of like creating your own brand and, and getting your own direct book inside. I think that it's such a like important thing moving forward because as you can see, Airbnb makes choices and makes decisions for the benefit of Airbnb, right? So they don't really like, you know what I mean? Like they care about their hosts as much as the commercials say, but like- It's a business guys. Like, yeah, they're, they're they care about Airbnb. Exactly. And so I think another great lessons that we've had over the year, uh, over the hundred episodes has been that, like the idea of like, the fact that you make money on Airbnb and the fact that they have been able to pay your bills just on Airbnb does not preclude you from creating your own brand and starting to like build your house on your own land, right? And then you can still use Airbnb and everything else, you know what I mean? But like only 15 to 20% of our income comes from Airbnb. Everything else comes from our own sites. By the way, Mark Simpson will be speaking at the event. He's flying in from the UK, so super pumped to have him. He's going to blow your socks off with how to get more direct bookings. He already sent me the slides. I was looking at him. I'm like, this is going to be sweet. Yeah. So if you guys haven't got your tickets yet, um, they're only getting more expensive. So I wouldn't wait any longer. Go to strwealthconference.com. We don't have that many left. Like, I think out of the thousand, we might have like 200 left or something like that. So like, it's going to fill up. So go grab your tickets. I promise you it'll be the best return on that investment that you've made. Like no question. Because again, if you think of it, if you were going to hire any one of these speakers to coach you or share this information with you, you'd be spending thousands of dollars. You're going to get access to all of them for two full days plus a, a kick-ass welcome party the first night, like for a fraction of that. Mm -hmm. So go check that out, strwealthconference.com. And one other ask, again, if you guys are enjoying this, just leave us a review, whether it's on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you guys listen to this, leave us a review because it helps all those companies know that, hey, this is a good show and we should share it with more people. So if you could do that, we'd truly appreciate it. If you're looking for more content, check out the YouTube channel, Short Term Rental Secrets, or join the free Facebook group. Again, these podcasts get uh, recorded live and streamed to that Facebook group like a week, two weeks, three weeks in advance. So if you want early access, just join the free Facebook group. So that is it for this episode. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much. hundred episodes in. Man, so it, poof, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So. We never thought, we never thought we would come this far. Mike and I have been, have been really just, I feel humble and, and I'm just very grateful for the opportunity. And again, for those people that will be coming to the event, look forward to meeting you. I, I honestly do think that an event like that with the right intentions can change your life. I know a lot of events have changed my life. I remember sitting next to Mike at an event, uh, a Grand Cardone event. It was kind of like the whole catalyst for everything that is now. 
Um, so if for if for nothing else, I think you owe it to yourself. If this was supposed to be the year, the moment, the thing, and maybe you know it's May or or, or early June when you listen to this, and you're like, I still I I still not there, right? I'm kind of missing the gas. Maybe the event is is what you need. Maybe you'll meet the person. Maybe you'll hear the speaker. Maybe you'll find the clarity that you need to just make this year your moment. Like make this year what you've always wanted. And again, if you've been with us from the beginning and you listen to all 100 episodes, we do hope that your business has absolutely exploded and grew like like ours. Because that's ultimately, I know that's that's my my wish for everybody that kind of listens to us. 100%. 100%. Well, as always, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have an amazing week. And we'll talk to you soon. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.